Readers, you know, you're our kind of people. And now if you're a book club read, you have to compete with people like Jane Austen. There's so many dead people who want to be read by book club. So I really feel honored and lucky and blessed that they do read me, and that's why we do this party. Here we are, 600 people, and most we've ever had. The waiting list is really long. It's 600 tomorrow. I don't think there's any other way to do it. You're at my house. It means a lot to me. And I can see that when you guys come, how much it means to you, but you must know it means more, it means more to us. So this is my actual house. They will look around, they walk around. And to me, it's really part of what happens in books anyway, because books are a little bit like, you're really knowing somebody's like soul. I mean, we all know the pressure that a book club is in to choose a good book, right? You don't want to choose the dud book. We absolutely love doing the book club party. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy, but it's crazy fun for us because I think there are two types of writers. You know, some are more introverted and really write to explore themselves. But then there's that other storyteller type that writes to explore without and to reach out to people and to make connections. And um, I look at her and I go, and I see that, that she looks tired. And I'm realizing Aww. that, you know, it's so easy when you're working with your parents to fall back into those old roles. Like, I'm 30. I should be able to have offer something a little more helpful than rate times time equals distance. <laughs> and, and letting her drive me around all the time. Like, why does she have to do the lion's share of the driving? It's not really fair. So I say, Mom, you look like I can drive. Why don't you let you look tired? Let me drive. We started to realize there wasn't much in the marketplace of books they were about mothers and daughters that A, that was positive, and B, was about an adult daughter. My daughter's 30. Um, so she's not an eight-year-old. And, and that's a different matter. So we like writing about that in a humorous way. She has mom. Listen, we have a lot of teachers time. here. Rate times time. Rate times time equals distance. I didn't invent it. It's the law. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and I think people relate to them very well. We write these books whether they're the literal truth or the emotional stories from the heart. They have to be really true. We like to say about these stories, the ones that are in the funny books, um, if it doesn't make us cringe, it won't make you laugh. Right. You have to put everything into it, all of your heart, all of the plot. Sometimes we figure it out as we go, whether it's the literal ones or the ones that are the ones like most wanted. Um, and, you know, people say, do you write with an outline? No, I, are you surprised now? I don't write with an outline. <laughs> People, oh, it's a surprise ending. Guess who's the first person surprised by the ending? I think my mom and I do have very distinct voices, and I think you'll see that when you read our books together. Right, we write them completely separately, and then we put them together and always kind of surprised and chilled by how well they've <laughs> meshed together. There was one where I was sort of busting myself. You know, the joke's always on us, so you can laugh at us. <laughs> Welcome to laugh at us. Um, <laughs> uh, where I, I caught myself getting a little neurotic reading the New York Times wedding announcements, which is like really pathetic, right? Because I, I, I'm supposed to have evolved past the, the Jane Austen and want of a husband. I, even better, like I'm supposed to be, you know, Elizabeth Bennett here and like spunky and cool and a feminist. And here I am subtracting my age from all the brides. Like, <laughs> oh my God, okay, so she's 32, so I'd have to know him now. I would have to know him already. Like, who do I know who's my secret husband? And I, so I was like busting myself, like I had to get real. And then my mom realized that when we were putting the books together, we put all the essays together for the first time, a lot of times we're reading them for the first time, she had written one about getting neurotic about the obituaries. <laughs> She's subtracting her age the obituaries. obituaries. I was like, oh my I God, I count mom. down, I go, oh we my God, 72. We both the breaks. <laughs> like we both need to calm down. I come away from this, and so does Francesca, so happy and kind of fulfilled, because you see the person who read you and said, wow, your book, I couldn't put it down, or your book got me through chemo, or your book made me th get, escape from my troubles. I think books connect people because they're true, and that connection is why they nurture and why they heal.